So in case this morning wasn't enough, in case you didn't see enough charts up and to the right, data volumes are increasing, they're accelerating, and it's only going to get worse. <coughs> the, the only thing to note here, and I'll touch on this in, in, toward the end, is on the right, data volumes, it is expected that by 2020, almost 10%, maybe more, of data will be generated at the edge. And again, I'll touch on this toward the end. So you can think of the, the earlier thoughts as the problem statement. We are drowning in data, and it's this perfect storm of, of factors. So take cloud, for example. It was mentioned earlier, Amazon Web Services. A developer can spin up compute and storage in a man matter of seconds, and someone claimed earlier you can build a company with less than $5,000. I would really kill for some water right now. Uh, connectivity, sensors, uh, let's see. Uh, battery life, and all things are miniaturizing. So you're able, you saw the Raspberry Pi earlier, you're able to put sensors into more and more things. Lastly, data silos. We're creating all of this data. I gotta get some water. Can I get a little water? We're creating all of this data, but unfortunately, plant to plant and office to office, people may not have access to the same data creating this perfect storm of all of this data, but what the heck do we do with it? As a result, we have this fallacy that more information is going to give us more intelligence. More money we spend on software startups in San Francisco are going to all of a sudden bring us insights. Unfortunately, I wish I could tell you that was the case. Not the case. And you've heard this morning, automation has been around in manufacturing for many years. However, I think there are more cases where automation can truly be harnessed. So machine learning, you heard the guys talk about it earlier today. I'm not going to give you yet another definition of what machine learning is. What I am going to say is I think all too often machine learning is meant to be overly complex and thus unapproachable. Yes, there are cases like Google search algorithms, which I wouldn't begin to think that I could understand what's going on in those algorithms. That said, in the general case, machine learning is trying to take the burden from humans two machines to do the advanced computation, the experimentation, and the model training without constant oversight from humans. Really, truly, it's the scientific method, method on steroids. <coughs> Again, mentioned earlier, every company is starting to move in the direction of becoming a software company. JP Morgan, rumored to have employ more software engineers than Google, which is hard to fathom. Jamie Dimon is very outspoken in his, his search to becoming a software company and use, like, utilizing more and more algorithms. Likewise, Capital One, we think of their products as being credit cards. Their CIO is quoted as thinking that his products are software and data. Now, I know what's going through all of your heads right now. Disrupting commerce, way easier. Disrupting manufacturing, turns out, really hard. You can't replace an airplane with software. You can make a better airplane, you can do so faster, you can do so differently, but you can't, in fact, replace, you can replace algorithms in trading with better software. You can't replace an airplane with software. Turns out Honda and Fiat still have to sell cars to Uber for Uber then to drive us around as passengers. In the autonomous car case, we still need the cars Drivers may be optional, but we still will need the cars to, to get around. Likewise, American Airlines has to buy airplanes. They may be able to better service those airplanes. They may be able to predict maintenance better with the use of data, but they still have to deliver those airplanes. So it brings me to two things. You can really think of the way machine learning is going to impact the industry in, in two different ways. First is the way of improving the process of making things. The second, improving the actual products themselves. So on the first, automating the process. Rio Tinto was mentioned earlier today, mining giant in Australia. They use autonomous trucks to transport iron ore. That is improving their process. Granted, it's in the natural, natural resources sector, not manufacturing, but same idea. Amazon right now on their warehouse floor Machines, robots are running around, putting packages together to deliver the end product to our doorstep more quickly, more effectively. On the second piece, improving the product, think about how software has played into the rise of Tesla. Tesla, instead of delivering you a car, you driving off and never improving the car again, Tesla can just, all of you have an improved car over the air with, uh, with no visit back to the dealer. So, 
Predictive maintenance is a far cry from this dawn of singularity. I accept that. As a venture capitalist, I am in the business of trying to find these ideas, great ideas, which is becoming harder as more and more ideas are coming out, uh, investing into those ideas, and then ultimately selling them back to all of you to consume in your business. <coughs> Venture as an industry probably hasn't had the best nose for manufacturing like maybe it has for retail, e-commerce, financial services, healthcare. And there are probably many reasons for that. I think one is if you take LinkedIn, take Salesforce. These are companies that skew towards having a massive number of customers, available customers, and the, knee, the, the average selling price, price ends up being much lower. Contrast that with manufacturing, much narrower available customer set, and often the sell, selling prices are million or multi-million dollars. Now, this is just a different risk appetite for venture capital. I don't think that it doesn't mean that it, it doesn't exist, but it is changing. 